Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Storytime. Today, we are reading the last chapter of Max Lucado's Tell Me the Secrets, Treasures for Eternity. You know, we've been following the characters of Shannon, Landon, and Eric, the young kids who met Melva and Josh by hitting a baseball through their window. Well, as they worked on their home to help them pay for the cost of fixing the window, they became great friends. And Josh would teach these children treasures for eternity, lessons he learned as li through living his life and being a missionary in Africa. And he would spend time, he would read, he would encourage, and he would teach them so many things about life. Well, this final chapter is called The Secret of Life, and we are going to read what happens to our characters in this last chapter. It says, rejoice and be glad because you have a great reward waiting for you in heaven. Matthew 5, 12. Landon swallowed hard and he folded the note. His teacher watched as he put it in his pocket. Is there something wrong? She asked. May I be excused? He asked her. My sister is waiting for me in the hall. Sure. Shannon's face was tear streaked. Behind her stood Eric, his hands on her shoulders. His face was solemn. How did you find out? Landon asked them. Melva called my mom, Eric replied. Mom called the school office. Josh is in medical center hospital. They took him there this morning. Something happened to his heart. Landon, Shannon began to cry. Something is wrong with his heart. Melva was the only person in the waiting room. When she saw Eric, Landon, and Shannon, she smiled. Josh will be glad to see you, she told them. Will they let us? Landon asked. For a few minutes, Shannon sat next to Melva. Is he going to be okay? Melva spoke softly. Josh is very sick. His heart is weak. The doctors just don't know. Her voice was firm as she spoke, but her eyes filled with tears. You can come in now. It was the nurse at the door. They followed her into the intensive care ward. A circle of 10 rooms surrounded the nurse's station. Behind each glass wall was a patient. Some were bandaged, others were in traction. Others, like Josh, had tubes inserted in their arms and wires taped to their skin. They'd never seen Josh so still. He lay on his back, eyes closed. Above his head, a monitor was beeping with each heartbeat. A plastic mask connected to an oxygen hose covered his nose and mouth. It helps him breathe, Melva explained. Landon and Eric stopped at the foot of the bed, but Shannon went up to Josh's side. She put her little hand in his big one and squeezed. Can he talk? She asked. Not with the oxygen tube, Melva replied, but he can hear you. He opened his eyes. Look who is here to see you. Melva tried to sound cheerful. Josh lifted his eyebrows. Eric and Landon walked around the bed and stood at the side of their old friend. They'd never seen him look so tired, so weak. He opened his hand and both Eric and Landon held it. They didn't know what to say, so no one said anything. Josh's eyes went from face to face. After a few moments, Josh lifted his hand and began to draw in the air. That means he wants to write something, Melvin interpreted. He has something to tell us. With a pad on his stomach, Josh scrawled three words and handed them to his wife. She read them, nodded softly, 
and assured Josh, I'll take them there and read it. Just then the nurse entered the room. I'm sorry, she instructed, but visiting time is over. You can return at four o'clock. Josh looked again at each of the children. He forced a smile from beneath the mask. They told him goodbye. Melva leaned over and kissed his forehead. We'll be back, she whispered, and left the room. He closed his eyes. As they walked down the hall, Landon asked Melva, what did he write? She handed him the pad. The handwriting was difficult to read. Obsto, obster, no, it's obstet, obstetrical, Melva said. He wrote obstetrical ward. What kind of award is that? Shannon asked. It's not an A ward. <laughs> it's a ward, a part of the hospital. Josh wants me to take you there and tell you something. What was the third word? Eric spoke up. Secret. Melba smiled. He wants me to read you a secret from the book. Landon had no idea what obstetrical meant, but he didn't feel like asking. He wasn't in the mood to talk much. Neither was anyone else. It was a quiet group that rode the elevator to the lower floor. Only Shannon spoke. A hospital is a sad place, she commented. What you are about to see may change your mind, Melva responded as she put her arm around Shannon's shoulder. The elevator door opened to a room of bright colors and excited people. Bright balloons were painted on one wall and a colorful aquarium stood in front of the other. Straight ahead were the backs of a row of people, people all looking through a large window. They were laughing and pointing and lifting up small children so they could see. It's the baby section, Eric exclaimed. This is where my cousin was born. Can we see the babies? Shannon asked. That's why we are here, Melville responded. All four went to the window. Shannon was just tall enough to peek in and see the newborns. They're so little, she exclaimed. How old are they? Landon asked as he looked at the row of bassinets. Some were born this morning, Melva answered. They are brand new. It was easy to be amazed at the little bundles wrapped in blankets. Most were asleep, tiny faces soft and relaxed. But a couple of them were crying loudly. They must be hungry, Eric laughed. They've had quite a journey, Melva added. Man, Landon observed. This room is just the opposite of the room where Josh is. Here, everyone is happy and excited. Up there, they are quiet and afraid. In a way, it is different, Melva agreed. But in another, it is very similar. How? asked Landon. Why don't we sit down? I'll let Josh explain it to you. They went to a couch and took a seat. Melva spoke as she took the book of secrets and the key from her purse. Josh loves to come here. At least once a week, he comes to visit. Does he like babies? Shannon asked. That's just part of it. He also likes what God teaches him here. What? Some time ago, he came and brought the book. And as he sat, he wrote a letter, a letter to you. A letter he wanted me to read to you if anything ever happened to him. Would you like to hear it? Sure, they said, leaning forward to listen. And Melva began to read. Dear Landon, Eric, and Shannon, this is a very important letter. Melva is reading it to you because something has happened to me. She has brought you here because I want you to learn one of life's most important secrets, the secret of death. Very few people understand death. Most are afraid of it. 
Most try to ignore it. Hardly anyone wants to talk about it. But God wants you to understand it, and he doesn't want you to be scared. Many think death is when you go to sleep. They are wrong. Death is when you finally wake up. Death is when you see what God has seen all along. I want you to do something for me. I want you to think about these babies. Imagine what has happened to them. They have just left one place and entered another. Just a few hours ago, each one of them was in a mommy's tummy. They were safe. They were warm. They had all they could eat. All they had to do was sleep. Suddenly, they were pushed into a strange world that they had never seen before. Imagine you could speak to one of these infants before he was born. What if you told them what was about to happen? What if you said, in just a few minutes, you are going to leave this tummy? Your time in here is about up. Before you know it, you will be in a room full of people and lights and noises and smells. I don't want to go, the baby might say. I like it here. Besides, I don't know what a people is. Oh, you don't need to worry. It's not all bad out there. You'll, you would tell the infant, I mean, you might have to go to school and take baths. What's a school and a bath? None of that sounds good to me. I like it right here. But it's dark in there. It's crowded and cramped. Don't worry. You'll be glad you came out. Thanks, but no thanks. I'm happy where I am. I want to stay just right here. Landon chuckled at the thought of the baby not wanting to be born. The baby doesn't have a choice, Melva. He has to come out. Yeah, Eric said, smiling. Who would want to stay inside a tummy forever? That's exactly what Josh is explaining, Melva answered. Listen to what he writes next. You see, kids, there comes a time in life when we, like the baby, have to make a journey. Just like the baby has to leave the tummy and enter this world, there comes a time for us to leave this world and go to heaven. And most people don't want to go. We act like the little baby in the tummy. We like it where we are. This world may not be perfect, but at least it's familiar and we don't want to leave. Melva's voice choked as she read the next sentence. Eric, Landon and Shannon. It's time for me to leave. It's my turn to go and be with God in heaven. I don't want you to be afraid. I'm not. It's my time. I accept that. It's okay to be sad. But don't be angry. Don't be scared. God knows what he's doing. I will miss you but we won't be separated very long. Someday, your time will come to leave. And when it's your time, I want you to know I will be waiting for you. I'll be there when you get there. I'll be one of those proud people standing at the glass. And standing beside me will be your father, your heavenly father. We'll be waiting. Don't forget the secret. Love, Josh. Melva had barely finished reading the letter when her name was paged over the speaker system, telling her to return to the intensive care unit. She swallowed hard, looked at the kids, and said, let's go. When they reached Josh's floor, the kids waited outside as Melva went in. Though she was gone for only a few minutes, it seemed like hours. When Melva returned, her face looked pale and sad. She sat on the couch and wept softly. They said he dozed off and never woke up. He's gone away, asked Shannon. 
No, Shannon. He hasn't gone away. He's gone home. He's finally gone home. It's the day he's always dreamed about. Melva looked at Landon and Eric. This was in his hands. She handed Landon his baseball, the same baseball Eric had hit through the window. On it, Josh had scribbled 1 Corinthians 15, 51. What does that verse say? Landon asked. Eric picked up a Bible from the table and looked it up. I'm telling you this strange and wonderful secret. We shall not all die, but we shall all be given new bodies. Sounds just like something Josh would say, Shannon observed. I can't believe he's dead, Melva. Landon began to cry. Oh, Landon, he is alive. He is more alive than he has ever been. He just isn't here. What do we do now? Eric asked. What do we do? We prepare for heaven like Josh did. His entire life was given to God. And since he lived for God on earth, he will live with God in heaven. Melva looked at the three children standing in front of her. She thought for a moment about all they had learned together. Lessons God had taught them about growth and peace and love. Stories about the Wemmons, Punchinello, and the Song of the King. God used Josh to teach us a lot, she said, pulling Shannon onto her lap and putting her arms around the boys. We will miss him, but we will see him again. And when we do, we will be together forever. That's what God has promised. And that is no secret. Probably no topic is avoided more in life than death. It looms as the final enemy, but on the cross, Christ defeated death and Satan. And because of his victory, death for the Christian becomes merely a doorway into eternal life. If we could see through God's eyes, we would see the wonderful things he has in store for us in heaven. Mansions, streets of gold, the tree of life, the presence of Jesus. And Jesus is preparing a place just for you, as well as for your friends, if you invite them. A perfect place, tailor-made, more beautiful than anything you could imagine. I've saved the best for last though. The best part for me is that the one who paid for my entrance is the one who will welcome me in. You'll recognize him by the nail prints as he beckons you home. All of a sudden, it won't seem so scary anymore. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many rooms if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. John 14, 1 through 3. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Philippians 1, 21. Yes. We are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5, 8. Death can be confusing and frightening and saddening. I personally have lost a few people that I love dearly very recently, and I love the explanation. The explanation of we don't understand like the baby in the mommy's tummy that wants to stay there. They don't want to, to leave and be birthed. That example helps me understand that this life is temporary and we are here. And as we die or our loved ones that know the Lord die, we are sent through a doorway, really the doorway to eternity. And that's what death is for the believer, a doorway to live forever with our Heavenly Father 
and our Savior Jesus and the loved ones that have gone before us. So I hope that this story encourages you that for us to live is Christ and to die is gain. And if you have lost a loved one or you are hurting, please know that we are available to encourage and pray for you. May the Lord bless you. And I look forward to reading you another book next time.